Hey, welcome back, or welcome, if you're new here. Today I wanted to use some stuff that I haven't used on camera yet, or haven't used on camera in a while. Because here on this channel I like to promote quality over quantity and using what you have, instead of constantly buying the newest, brightest thing. It went on to NYX's website because I wanted to buy it straight from the source. I picked up the new Nude Beige lip liner because I wanted to compare them for you all because it seemed like I got kind of a um, a pretty rapid response when I talked about that lip liner being um, either reformulated or color reformulated. And so I think I might have found a good replacement, but you'll have to stick to the lip category to find that out. Anyways, let's just get to the rest of the makeup. My eyebrows are on. I started using uh, a new shade in the micro brow pencil. I got this in the shade um, Ash Brown. I find that this is like a nice a nice color for me. It's not, it like, in a way where it doesn't pull too warm for my black eyebrows, because I like to go a little bit lighter and cool tone to create some dimensionality. Um, and then I picked up a new clear eyebrow gel, because I am a big eyebrow gel girly. Um, I bought the Control Freak eyebrow gel. Uh, it has a suspiciously large wand. I, when I first opened this, I was like, oh, that's a wand. I do find uh, that I, I enjoy. I enjoy its effect. My eyebrows stay up and without feeling like crunchy or heavy, but they, they stay up and um, there's no like white flakiness no matter how much I build. So yeah, I would say that that is a win. I think it was only like six bucks. So I have the Rode um, Peptide Lip Treatment. I went ahead and I, I finally got this and I got the uh, glazing milk, like they're uh, kind of milky. It's the, it's like a milky essence in a way. And I have to say that I enjoy both of them immensely. Um, I have found, so there has been this like rumor online that this product gets grainy. Now I have found in little, you know, different applications of it. I, it has felt kind of grainy, um, but I think a lot of it has to do if it's product that's sitting in the kind of like upper part of the ap applicator or if there's leftover product on this part, you know? Um, so I don't know what that means. I don't know if it means it's going to expire quickly, um, but it seems like the color or the colored ones seem to have that kind of um, grainy defect to them more than the clear ones. I got the scent Salted Caramel. You can sort of taste it, but it's more of like a scent that does dissipate in time. And it's really lovely. My lips do feel hydrated and cared for. It's really glossy. It's really lovely. I think that it's priced at a really good price point. I mean, it's probably not actually worth $16, but the fact that it's like a celebrity makeup brand and like an it girl kind of brand. My other really favorite one and also the Summer Fridays, they're like $10 more. And I do like them a little bit more than this, but I can't say that I like them $10 more. So I don't know, this might be my new go-to if it doesn't get completely grainy and crappy. Um, so we're just gonna have to see, but yeah, um, love it. I my hair back here. In with the Glossier Stretch Fluid Foundation. And I'm actually gonna take just one pump on the back of my hand for my whole face and apply it with a damp sponge because I don't want too much of this because I feel like my skin is doing really, really well. And I don't know, I just I just don't want like too much coverage. I still really love this. I just don't feel like I've used it in a while because I've been trying to focus on other things in my collection. Um, because for a while this was like my go-to foundation. And what's really nice about it is that it lays on top of a dewy base in a very lovely way because it is kind of a more like satin natural finish like it doesn't give off like a huge like dewy glow the way a lot of products do right now um so the coverage is incredibly customizable also mentioned that i am wearing the shade light three 
which is uh, for light skin tones with olive undertones. And I think that the shade match is perfect. It's so good. I'm gonna go in with a bronzer next. So this is my um, Hourglass Ambient Lighting Bronzer in Luminous Bronze Light. It's this very, it's very like fair skin friendly for all my like very fair people out there um, because it does kind of have like a pink undertone to it. Like not in a way where you're gonna look like peachy, it just has this like very pretty pink quality to it. Like it's, it's very, very nice. And if you're darker than I am, I would say that you could almost even use this like a blush. Like this would be a really pretty nude blush on you. I'm kind of picking it up a little bit lately because I am a little bit more fair right now. Um, I'm gonna take this on my eyes. I love this product on my eyes. I think it's like such a beautiful, beautiful brown. Nothing wrong with it, just kind of a little bit older in my collection, so sometimes it gets forgotten about. The next product I have yet to use on camera, but I've had it since November. It's by Patrick Ta, it's the, um, powder and cream blush duo. And I have this in the shade She's Bake. I don't reach for it as much. And, and it wasn't really like, because I don't like it. It's more so that I find it really pigmented and so it, thus it's like kind of getting pushed to the side a little bit. And the thing is, is it's not even old in my collection. I just have yet to like reach for it for a video slash start using it on the everyday. But it's this gorgeous terracotta. Like I, I think it's just such a beautiful, beautiful color. Um, and so I've just been trying to like spend some time with it lately and learn its little tricks. I don't know, I've been I've been wearing makeup for a long time and so I've encountered a plethora of formulas and so for me to say that a blush formula is kind of putting me through the ringer, I mean it's I would say for like a viral blush that it's you know not that user friendly. So I'm gonna take the powder side first and really like get it into the brush here because I I find that like my makeup goes from like looking good to looking like I have way too much blush on my face very quickly with this product. And so I find that I have to like really go back and forth between my blush and my hand to make sure the, the product is in the bristles in an even way because as you see, look, look what happened already. Like even from like going back and forth and I'm tapping, I'm not like swiping. And the thing is, is like, I have other blushes that are just as like pigmented and like just as like deep of a terracotta as this. And it like, for some reason, just the way this goes on is just really intense. Like this blush does not mess around. So I can't really like blame the color because I mean, I know when a color is too deep on me, you know what I mean? Not the most user friendly. Like I just kind of have a time with it. Like look at my hand, even just from like tapping it off. Like imagine like, you know, someone being influenced by someone and getting a Patrick Ta blush and like, just like right on their face. Like, I don't know, I don't know. But yeah, it's just, I, it, and when I'm wearing it, I'm like, oh, it's it's not like I feel like I don't like it. It's just, it's just, it takes a little bit more time. I'm gonna go in with the cream now. And so I'm gonna take that same makeup sponge here and just really get her on the sponge. And I don't know, I also go back and forth of whether, how I feel about the cream side too. Cause I'm like, is it pigmented? Is it not pigmented? does it lay on top of its powder counterpart in a lovely way? I just like, I just keep going back and forth because everything in my brain tells me that I should be liking this a lot more than I am. And then I'm like, is it just user error? I don't know. But like, look how, like, it's almost like too much for me. It's gone. It's kind of traveled a little bit. I'm just gonna take the side with no product on it. Kind of work it 
into my skin a little bit more. Okay, I'm gonna try and get this blush under control. I'm gonna take my NARS Soft Matte Concealer and I wear the shade uh, Cafe Con Leche in that. Um, and it's what I use to carve out my eyebrows every day now. Uh, and so I'm just gonna take that kind of under my eyes and around the cheek products to kind of calm it down a little bit because it's just, it's a little too much. Even for me, who's like super into blush, like a bronzy blush product. Yeah, I feel like, like I love a pigmented blush and I love like a really red brownie terracotta, but for some reason I feel like you don't have a lot of control with this formula. And I don't really know how it got, I mean, I don't know, why does anything go viral and get hyped? But I don't know, I feel like, I feel like it's not my favorite thing and I thought it was gonna be like my favorite thing. Cause I've, I've been lusting after it for so long. Like I'm still determined to figure out the best method. So that is complexion. I think I cleaned it up pretty well. Um, but yeah, blush duo. I don't know yet. Okay, I think it's safe to take my hair out of this clip. Eh, it's okay. Um, next I'm gonna go in with this Charlotte Tilbury quad. Um, this is the Flawless Eye Filter. So it's a all shimmer palette. I've always felt like this would be a really great palette for a makeup artist to have in their kit for bridal looks. So um, I just never reach for it. And I'm honestly thinking about decluttering it. So I might, I might try to like give it some love in the next coming weeks before I really decide. So I'm going to take a mixture, I think, of the top two shades with my finger, just kind of go back and forth and kind of just tap it onto my eyelid because it's pretty. It's just, I don't know, I have so many like single eyeshadows and stuff that stuff like this kind of gets forgotten about in my collection. Or like, I don't know, when I come up with an idea for a look or like a theme for a YouTube video, I'm never like, oh, I'm going to use that Charlotte Tilbury palette, <laughs> you know? Like, it's fine. Like, I'm looking at it and I'm like, yeah, this is good makeup, but I'm not, like, obsessed with it the way I thought I would be when I bought it. Like, it's always just kind of been a shoulder shrug to me. And as you see, like, it's, it's fine. The real question is, is do I feel like putting on mascara today? We're gonna keep it all natural today where I'm not putting on mascara. I don't feel like it. Now the moment for the nude beige comparison. <laughs> so um, I have the old nude beige. If you're not familiar, this is one of my favorite lip liners. Actually, it's a lot of people's favorite lip liner. Um, it's their uh, just, it's the NYX regular old lip pencil in the shade nude beige. This has been my favorite for a long time. I like it's, it was an everyday for me. I used it on brides all the time. And it's this perfect, like, neutral, cool toned nude. It's a really nice contour color for the lips for the everyday. Um, and it's one of those shades where it, you could pair it with a neutral lip to give it, like, a nice contour, or you can pair it with kind of a warmer lip to kind of cool it down and make it more neutral. Like it's one of those versatile lip liner shades. Um, for me, like a lip liner is so make or break for a lip look, like, and a really good lip liner will adjust. Like it's such, it's such a pivotal tool for makeup artists because it can adjust the color and the shape of the lips. Like it's so good. And so a good lip liner has longevity, but it's creamy enough to blend out. But when it sets down, it stays. So um, this is the old nude beige. And then I purchased the new nude beige. And I wanted to get it like straight from the source. I didn't want to get it on Amazon and I didn't want to go to any drugstore or anything like that. I just wanted to get it straight from NYX to see if it was actually different. And it is. It is different. So I'm going to put it 
next to it. And it, it's not even like the same thing. Look at that. Like, okay, so that is the new nude beige and that is the old nude beige. Can you even believe it? Like, I don't even need to put them like side by side on my lips to show you that they are, like that's a mauve. Like that's, that is not the same color at all. Like what it, why would they do that? Like, I'm so, so confused. Like, it's not a bad color. It's just not even a color I, I don't think I would reach for. Like, to me, like, that's like a pink nude. Yeah, that's so weird. It's so weird. I did pick up another color that is new to me. And this one is um, in Nude Truffle. A lot of people really, really like this color. And I do too. So... Uh, that is Nude Truffle. In the middle is the old Nude Beige color, and this one is the new Nude Beige color. So as you see, you get that color in Nude Truffle. Um, it's not identical. It's a little bit darker, and it's a little bit more brown, but if you're into the effect of what Nude Beige did to your lips and if it was like your ride or die try picking up nude truffle and i don't think you will be disappointed because i wore it the other day and i was like this is really really pretty and this might be a new everyday shade for me in the future so i'm just gonna use nude truffle on my lips today and i don't know i feel like the formula almost feels drier than what I remember this formula being, like it still blends out in a nice way, but it's not, it definitely changed. Okay, and to finish off the makeup, I'm gonna go in with an old favorite of mine. This is uh, the NYX um, Soft Matte Tinted Lip Balm. I love this stuff. I have this in the shade Intimate. It's kind of this like nudie pinky brown. And I think, yeah, I, mean, I didn't even look in the mirror. Yeah, that goes with, that goes with nude truffle really, really nicely and the blush really, really nicely. So, mm -hmm, yeah, into that. And it's laying on top of the road peptide lip treatment that has sunk into my lips a little bit as I've been filming this. This is still really good. Um, if you like this, you will definitely like the Violette FR um, Bisu Balm, I think it's called. The lip, the lipstick from the <laughs> Violette FR uh, formula. It's like that matte tinted, very nice formula. <laughs> It's like a it's it's like a velvety matte, but it's not super super pigmented. It's very light on the lips. It's not drying. Kind of like that nice velvety moussey kind of feel, which is my favorite type of matte lip formula. I don't really like a li liquid lipstick or a high pigment matte lip. So yeah, that is my my lips, and I really like them. I mean, I like the makeup. Makeup looks good. It's easy, it's semi-natural. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, that's it. So um, yeah, that was, a, that was a little chaotic ride, but we did it. Okay, that's it. Looking at the monitor, I'm like, it looks pretty good. That's a pretty nice like everyday kind of look. Thing is why I don't I wouldn't really deem it everyday is the, the how persnickety that blush is. Like how long it took me to blend out and like get it to not be so like bold, if you will. Um but now that I've dulled it down, it's it looks really really nice, especially with this lip and the eye too. Maybe I won't declutter that palette. I don't know. Tell me if I should declutter that palette. Anyways, that's a f that's my uh, makeup that I haven't used on camera slash used on camera in a while. And uh, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!